Hello and welcome to Solar Quotes Vodcast, episode 17. That's right. The first post-election vodcast. Tell us about this blog post, Ronald, where you actually uh, disclose who you voted for. No, I didn't actually. Give some hints who uh, you voted for. I did not vote for One Nation <laughs> or even the Liberal Party or the Coalition in general because they... While they make kissy kissy noises coming up to the election about the environment, yeah, that's not what they've been doing in real life. They've been dragging their feet on every environmental initiative. And this, under Tony Abbott, they uh, scrapped the carbon price, which was a very sensible policy. And to compensate for the money hole that created, they then raised the taxes on petrol and diesel. Because apparently, carbon prices tax or taxes, as he called it, that apply to coal will destroy your economy. But eh, if you just raise it on petrol and diesel, which just about everyone buys, that's fine. So they put a price on some carbon. Yeah. Got ya. Yeah. So what are the tangible effects on the solar industry of the coalition staying in power? <sighs> the good news is they're not likely to indirectly interfere with uh, the solar industry with the STCs that reduce the price of solar because they're being gradually phased out anyway and because it would be very unpopular. Um, the, they could get nasty, but I, I don't think the coalition now is the same coalition we had three years ago. They're not good, but they're not quite as frothing at the mouth as they were. They want to play it safer. I think one of the benefits of the coalition winning, not that I wanted them to win, is that we'll have mm. some stability, probably, mm. in the solar industry. I don't think they'll touch mm. the STCs. Yes, it seems the, very unlikely. The STCs is a very well-designed mechanism that is being reduced by about 10% a year. Yeah, 20, 30 will be the last yeah. year. Yeah, very gradually um, winding it down. And it's successful and it makes solar a lot cheaper and it's worked. Mm -hmm. And everyone knows what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. There's and no big surprises. And it will be the only scheme encouraging clean electricity generation, apart from the leftovers of a large scale generating renewable energy target, which is now full, but still operating. Mm. So hopefully we've got some stability in the solar industry. What won't happen is we won't have the $2,000 federal battery rebate that Shorten promised. Yes, yes. And that does not worry me because, uh, well, if you want a rebate, there are states doing it. Uh, it's an interesting outcome for the Clean Energy Council approved retailer scheme. Yes, it is. So I imagine if the Labour federal battery rebate came mm -hmm. in, it, this is just my guess, it would have yeah. been tied to the approved solar retailer scheme. They certainly would have tried to do that, in my yes. opinion. And Hopefully they wouldn't have succeeded, but who knows. Which would have forced anyone that wanted to sell batteries anywhere in the country yeah. into being an approved solar retailer. Mm -hmm. So that's not going to happen. And I think that's a positive yes. for the solar industry because it's going to create more stability, less mm -hmm. upset. What bad shit's going to happen because these guys didn't get kicked out? Okay. Um, the good news is, by two, Labour said by 2030, we will have 50% renewable electricity in Australia. The market realities are our coal power stations are old and need and falling apart. They'll need to be shut down over the next 10 years, most of them. And renewables are continuing to fall in price. So we will end up with around 50% renewable electricity under a business as normal plan. What's the worst thing they might do to try and slow that down? One, subsidize coal, new coal power stations which I don't think they'll be able to do. That, that would be nutty. That would be completely insane. But the worst thing for the environment they could probably do is open up whole new basins for coal. It would require billions in government money, which taxpayers won't be getting back. So once you've done spent all that money, then they're going to want to mine a lot of coal from there, regardless of what uh, the economics of it are. And uh, this new coal in the Galilee Basin, it's awful. How is Low it? Low quality, yes. Uh, 
The good news is no one, no banks want to touch it. It's not seen as economically viable. Playing devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. If the demand for coal stays the same, whether we build these mines or not, what's the environmental benefit of not building them? Oh, uh, okay. In terms if, of CO2 emissions. If you, if you build a mine and, and the coal demand is there, yep. then you're going to lower the cost of coal. Because you're increasing supply. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. And there's plenty of jobs in renewables. Yes. Yes. <laughs> or other mines. Australia's a huge mining industry. Your skills and talents are in demand. Yeah, all these batteries mm. that we're going to build are going to need a huge amount of mines. Uh, Yes, yes, all those batteries we're going to build here in... Adelaide. Well, sorry, the world's going to build. Oh, yes, definitely. We, yes, I'm a global yes. citizen, Ronald. Mm -hmm. Should we move on from the election? It's old news. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Here's one from Renew Economy, which I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. Gupta chooses SunTech for Kultana Solar Farm and big battery project. Mm -hmm. So, big solar farm. And I thought it was interesting that they've chosen SunTech solar panels. I would say it's a mid-range brand. Would you like me to prove that? How will you do that, Finn? Well, imagine you wanted to compare the price of SunTech solar panels with many other solar panels available. Well, if there was some sort of online tool which would let me do that, that would be amazing, Finn. Check it but out, man. Sure oh, wow. I can't believe my eyes. I've never seen this before. Check it out. Wow. So yeah. we've, got, we've got this awesome solar panel comparison table. Mm, These are all do. the brands. Click down here, you see all the different submodels. How good's that? <laughs> but even better than that, new even feature. Even better thing? All done by Jono, I might add. Yes, Coded up by Jono. He's Let's the man. Let's sort the panels. Or the woman. There's nothing wrong with that. I think Jono's a man. Mm. Uh, no, I'm just some Cost per watt, low to high. Excellent. Create graph. Mm-hmm. Okay. That is cheap to expensive. Now ignore yeah. these two here. That's TBD, mm -hmm. which means to be determined. Yes. So the cheapest reputable solar panel we've got on the list is mm -hmm. Opal Solar. These are retail prices. Yep. Secret, if you want mm -hmm. to get the wholesale price, divide by 0 0.32. <laughs> so these are retail prices, including GST. Uh, Opal Solar, about 58 cents a watt. Actually, that figure you gave isn't correct. What? 3.2? 0.32. 0.32. 1.32. 1.32. by 1.32. Thank you. Good job you're here. I get more expensive. Yeah. <laughs> you're good. I'm good. Divide by 1.32. Mm -hmm. um, so, Opal Solar, about 58 cents a watt. That's about as cheap as you'd want to go, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, retail price. So that's wholesale price plus margin plus GST. Uh, let's find the first SunTech. Will be a SunTech Poly. Here we are, 77. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. from 58 to 77, yeah. about 20 cents more. So you can see that if we just scroll around, it's pretty mid-range. Then you can get really expensive, like a mm. SunPower X Series, 185 a watt yes. retail. Really expensive, but you know, you, you get Rolls -Royce. a special. You're right. Yeah. Rolls Royce. Yeah. So Mr. Gupta, he's gone for a mid-range panel. And uh, this is for a solar farm. He's not going to be. It's, it's not going to be the same deal you get as when you're putting your on your roof. He's going to have a, a special contract with SunTech, etc. So we don't know the details of that. Yeah. But yeah, it's a mid-range panel. He's not going for the cheapest, uh, and obviously not for the Rolls Royces. Not a bad strategy. No, not a bad strategy at all. And I get to show off. Uh, yeah. Funky, funky solar panel comparison table. That's right. All right, let's move on. Mm -hmm. Should we do worst and best review of the week? We should. That's chosen by Ned. Mm -hmm. I'm dreading the worst one. Do you think this is the worst or the best? The, the title is Terrible Installation Requiring VCAT Order Against Installer. VCAT is Victoria mm -hmm. Consumer and Something Tribunal. Right. So nothing to do with like very dangerous cats. Got it. You got it. It's actually a really good, uh, I have been there mm -hmm. to help someone out, making a claim against an installer, VCAT. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, it's good. It works well. That and works it works for the consumer. It works for the consumer, it works well. Excellent. My experience of them is they're very fair and very easy to. And was it mind-numbingly boring, taking hours and days? Or was it uh, no, we sat in and waited for about 10 minutes. Yep. And then we sat in a room with a, not a judge, but a, mm -hmm. I think they call them magistrates. Yeah. 
and the magistrate decided there and then. Yeah, could. Though, if you have problems, there are things you can do to get redress, justice. Yeah, and in Victoria, VCAT, it's really mm -hmm. good. Um, so this chap, he went with a company called Gippsland Renewable Energy and Technologies, I think. Mm -hmm. Acronym great. Good old Gippsland. Um, upgrade of existing three kilowatt system to 6.2 kilowatts. Upgrade mm -hmm. resulted in solar panels overhanging the roof structure. You can't do that. At multiple orientation and pitch, <laughs> overlapping and shadowing existing new panels. No. <laughs> Five degrees. Use of multiple orientations and pitch with single um, MPPT. Installer would not provide system performance estimates, string diagrams, <laughs> electrical safety certificates. You have to. Mm -hmm. Installer would not assist with system remediation, requiring separate review at own cost. An additional $12,000 <sighs> of remediation. Oh. What did he do? Rebuild his roof around yeah. the system. <laughs> <laughs> um, installer mm. opposed cost recovery, resulting in VCAT legal action. Mm -hmm. That's additional cost incurred to employ an independent expert with monetary order against the installer. So he went to VCAT. Mm. VCAT said, you've got to pay this guy. Yep. Installer did not challenge the independent expert views on the installation limitation and issues. That's a terrible review. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a new yep. feature in the reviews where um, optionally the reviewers can upload proof of purchase. Um, this gentleman uploaded the proof of purchase to prove mm. that he'd gone with this company. green badge that says verified because mm -hmm. he uploaded, uh, uploaded a proof of purchase. Yeah, no doubts. Yeah, so that's a bit depressing. It is, it Not is. Not a solar quotes client. Oh, Gippsland is normally such a great place. They have the world's biggest worms, you know. Yeah, right. There is an amazing solar installer called Gippsland Solar. This mm. is not them. It's a different company. Mm -hmm. um, the world's biggest worms. The world's biggest worm. Gippsland's worms over two meters. Earthworms? Earthworms, yep. Jesus. They even have a tourist attraction, the big worm. <laughs> <laughs> Things you learn, Ronald. Oh, yeah. Uh, good review. Solar Pro. Uh, these are good guys. They're a solar quotes client. Excellent performance. Oh, now this is mm -hmm. everyone that leaves a review on solar quotes. We ask them a year later to, uh, if they can leave a new review. Mm -hmm. The idea being that they've had a year with the system. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure we're the only people that do that. About, I think, 15% of people give us a year follow up review. So. Mm -hmm. um, they're quite interesting. Excellent performance in summer when there is very little shade. Steady reduction in output as the shortest day of the year approaches. Yep. Mm. Uh, he's got a Powerwall 2. It's been great for smoothing out our time of use grid consumption. A software mm. upgrade means it now has automatic storm preparation. Oh, mine's good. got that, but I've never seen it actually kick in. Hmm. So I'm not sure it's working in Adelaide. It doesn't seem to be working on mine, but... Not many storms here. So. True. But I've, I've looked at it when there is definitely a storm coming. Right. right. Maybe they just... I haven't calibrated bad storm the same as yeah. what I calibrate a bad storm at. Yeah. I'm just a suck. <laughs> um, You're not from Queensland. <laughs> so it's meant, to, yeah, it's meant to fully charge from the grid if there's a storm coming. Mm. Uh, mine's never done that. Maybe, we, as you say, maybe we just haven't had enough severe storms in yep. Adelaide. Uh, I'm hoping for a further upgrade to support off-peak charging if a cloudy day is forecast. Mm -hmm. I have played with this by charging the reserve power, for, changing the reserve power from 5% to 33% and back. Uh, so he's got to kind of do it manually, um, mm. which is a bit of a pain. Yeah, I mean, the Tesla software should be able to do that by now. Uh, Tesla smartphone app is good for changing settings as well as monitoring PV, battery and grid power flow. Yeah, it is. It's really, really good. It's the best mm -hmm. app I've ever used for um, power monitoring. Um, yeah, it just gives you everything you need to know really simply. Mm -hmm. I realize the financial calculations are currently not mm. favorable for using batteries uh, with or without off-peak charging, but it's still satisfying to see reduced electricity bills. Yep, yeah, totally get it. He knows what he wants, he got it. It's yep. fine. It's right. with his eyes open. Yeah. 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 Excellent. I only, I only have a problem if for people telling people they will save money with batteries when they won't. That's what I hate. This is great. Here's an interesting one. Victoria Soul Rebates for many who jump the gun. So mm -hmm. jumping the gun is the process was meant to be mm -hmm. you apply for the rebate you get a special number called an eligibility number mm -hmm. and then you go ahead and install your solar. Yeah. What a lot of people did, and it wasn't just the dodgy guys, a lot of mm. good solar installers genuinely believed that as long as you'd applied for the rebate, um, you could go ahead and install the solar and then when you got the eligibility number, you could claim the rebate. Yeah. So there was a bunch of people that basically installed solar, 
Mm. Before they'd got the eligibility number and were told, nah, you're not getting your $2,250. Yeah. <laughs> they were pretty pissed off. Yes. Uh, Victoria, uh, Solar Victoria's done the right thing, I think, and mm -hmm. they're going to pay out to those guys. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th the whole idea was to, you know, help people put solar on their roofs, not to piss off people, you know. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, the whole reason this is a problem is that they've got this convoluted eligibility process, mm. which takes mm. quite a long time because yeah. you've got to be earning under, I think, 180 grand household income, yes. household worth less than 3 million. Yes. And not have had it before. Yeah. Now, the not have had it before, <laughs> yes. Makes, and you can't have solar on your roof. You, you, yeah, you can't uh, already have solar on your roof. They've changed that. So if you installed solar a really long time ago, you can get it. Yeah, so... I. I mean, I don't know, but I just mm. got a funny feeling that the overall cost of the scheme will actually be more by all the bureaucracy needed to check all yes. this than if they just said, solar's mm. good, yeah. give it to everyone as long as you haven't claimed, and you can only claim yeah. it once. Yeah, they should have just had it across the board. You can only claim it once. Um, if they were worried, they could have made it a little less and it still would have worked. Um, at the moment, it's half the cost of your solar up to $2,240. Yep. They might change it on the 1st of July, I don't know. I would have said, you know, maybe one third of the cost, up to like six plus kilowatts, because, you know, it makes sense to go larger, but eh. That's uh, what they got right with the STCs. I won't lick a gift horse in the mouth. The STCs is so simple mm. because yeah. there's no eligibility. It's just got to be less than 100 kilowatts and you can have it as many times as you like in this case so it's just mm. so simple to claim it's so yeah. quick and simple to claim and that just yep. makes it streamlined i think just mm. when you're doing these rebates it's the stcs have proven simple yes. works yes at least they're improving the system it'll be all mm. through the installer in the future and the households won't have to worry about it bring on july the first when the yes. installers can actually start installing mm -hmm. people who want the rebate which is most people obviously obviously here we go. REC unveils Alpha Series solar panels yeah. up to 380 watts, which isn't a big deal. There's panels that are bigger than 380 watts, mm. but it's a 60 cell panel, so it's normal size residential panel. Yes, yeah, so pretty it's cool. Big for the size. So 17 panels in a six and a half kilowatt system. Uh, something like that. Yeah, you go back. Maths. I did it on the calculator before. Oh, okay. Uh, you go back eight years. You had what 165 watt panels. That would have yeah. given you a two point something even, kilowatt system with 17 even smaller panels. back then yeah, yeah. So that's it's pretty cool yeah that is excellent uh check out the video it's very <laughs> they say they're using hetero junction cells but uh well if you look at the video i'd say it's pretty homoerotic actually it's not quite homoerotic enough Why is that? they should have gone all the way why is that instead of just having one oiled up naked guy half naked guy they should have just packed it full just for you, or? Um, no, no, it's just that I'm here wondering, what are they aiming at? What, what, what's, who's the target audience? It's unclear at this point. Mm. Is it women, you know? Is it gay men? Is it, you know, it's all open at the moment. If you want a laugh, go mm. to the blog post and have a look at the YouTube video. I like the bit where he goes, it has the power of beast. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> beast <laughs> power. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like a good panel. Yeah, it does. And REC is, you know, 20-year warranty. Or you there are approved, they install as they want, 25 years. That's, That's pretty, pretty good. good. Yep. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. 25-year product warranty. That's How efficient is it? I looked at, I know what it is. I read it. I can't remember. 20-something percent? Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, how do they get that? They use their HIT cells. That's not they, theirs. That's Panasonic's. Panasonic they, own hit technology. I guess they said, here, um, we want to license this. Can we do that, please? That's the we'll, first. We'll sign this piece of paper. And... That must be the first money. That's the first manufacturer I've heard of, apart from Panasonic, using hit technology. Mm -hmm. That's uh, where they make a silicon sandwich. Apart from Tesla. Oh, oh yeah. Because yeah. they've got Panasonic actually building them for them. Yes. Mm. yes. So you get silicon, your normal mono um, silicon uh, cell, and then you've got two layers of amorphous silicon between it and that should help with uh, getting light reflected through it yeah so if you if you want to get pack as many watts as possible onto your roof this would be a good choice although having said that we don't know what the price is yet yeah as soon as we do we'll get it on our comparison table yes but they're not going to make them until the fourth quarter of this year all so right okay still a big wait cool mm -hmm.
Here's one of yours, Ronald. Oh, yes. New Energy Tech Consumer Code. So this is a uh, code of conduct mm -hmm. that all the uh, state and territory governments apparently have asked for that they want anyone selling solar or batteries to sign up to. Mm -hmm. um, and it's currently out there for submissions. Yes. So, and you made a submission. Nice yes, one. I made a submission. I never made a submission before. So I wrote about this a week ago and I used some swear words in that <laughs> because I thought, you know, what they had would only have been written by an asshole. It was I, unethical in my opinion, what they had in parts or Why? at least. Um, because they were implying that people who didn't sign up to the code weren't interested in providing uh, quality installations or consumer protection. That's incredibly arrogant. Bullshit. It's just arrogance. Yes. People, just because people don't want to join your club doesn't mean they're not good people, you know? Oh, well, this is a no homers club, if you, you know? Everyone not in it is an idiot. No, that's not how it works. I think, I think, it, I think, I think the uh, motivation is well-meaning, but I think mm. um, th people writing this code can't get their head around why anyone wouldn't want to sign it. Yeah. Everyone in Australia, every family, I think, must have been bitten at some point by uh, builders' boards or plumbing prob or some consumer body which hasn't done what's right for the consumers when there's been a problem. So it's not, and installers, most of them are just normal people, they're going to be very wary of any uh, industry body which is, you know, wants to have a control or a say over how things are done. Yeah. It's natural. And then on top of that, you throw in language where you're saying people who don't join in are shoddy or implying that, that's just going to turn people off. The moral, most ethical installers are being turned away by that kind of language, which is the opposite of what they're saying they want to achieve. So if you're a good, honest installer, what mm -hmm. reasons would you have for not wanting to sign this code? It, uh, if it doesn't go far enough yep. for a start, or you're just not interested in this shit, you're doing your <laughs> own thing, you, you like getting out on the roof, putting a solar system in, and you don't like reading through codes or saying, oh, this person's ethics are my ethics. Yeah. Yeah. You want some personal... Assuming experience. that someone else shares exactly your values mm. down to the detail of a 20-page code of conduct or whatever it is, is incredibly mm -hmm. arrogant, I think. Yeah. There's no, and there's no need for it. We've got Australian consumer law. Yes. Um, yes. We've got installation standards. We mm. shouldn't need it. It's just, mm. it's just crazy. Yeah. Um, so what were your top three points in your submission? Okay. Um, one, you need uh, to be absolutely clear in your code of conduct that, that your members will not seek or accept any special treatment, whether it's regulatory, legal, or subsidy, that doesn't apply to the whole industry. Full stop. And that uh, stops this becoming an instrument of corruption. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next point. Uh, next point. This is related. That keeps the market healthy. You want a free market, free exchange of information. And I'm not saying I don't want consequences for shoddy installs. I definitely want those. I just don't want it to be uh, through this code specifically. Yeah. They can kick members out, yes. Yeah. But if you say that, oh, if you're not a member, you can't install, that's wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what I want to see, um, okay, what I didn't mention, but what I want, because it's not directly mentioned, is robust, independent inspections of solar systems. That's what the industry needs. But what I put into this is blended payback needs to be right out. That's where you take the great return, normally great return of a solar system, and you combine it with either the poor return or often negative return of a battery system to hide the fact that a battery won't pay for itself, that a household would be better off without it. So Jono and I spent half a day at mm. a consultation workshop thing. We banged on about blended payback. A yep. number of other people banged on about blended payback. Yep. They've completely ignored us. And that's, 
I think, I honestly think that the, um, the Clean Energy Council, the Smart Energy Council, um, and a bunch of other guys that are doing this, I think they see batteries as a means to an end. They want more batteries mm -hmm. installed because it helps integrate renewables. And they are willing for people to essentially be uh, deceived into mm. thinking the payback's better than it is. Yes. And they are happy for this to happen. It's Because yes. every time I bring it up with the CEC, with the Smart Energy Council, with these guys, they just totally ignore it. Yes. They, the industry appears to be happy for people to deceive people about the payback of batteries mm. to get a sale. Call me paranoid, but rooftop solar, uh, large-scale solar farms, wind power, geothermal, you name it, it all hurts the coal industry. Batteries don't really hurt the coal industry, and they lower the cost of operating the grid. They push those grid costs onto uh, private individuals. So yeah, I think that's why there's a push behind batteries and not for more solar or even pumped hydro. One of the arguments in the comments uh, from a very well-meaning chap uh, is that, oh, you know, if you get too specific about certain technologies, um, mm -hmm. that's very difficult because it's a broad-based code of conduct for all energy technologies. Now, that's a mm. bullshit argument. 95% of this code is going to be used for solar and batteries. Mm. So get into the detail of solar and batteries. Don't say, oh, we can't go into the detail of solar and batteries because it might not be relevant to flipping hydrogen fuel cells or something. Yeah, yeah. That's nuts. Crazy. This is a solar and battery code. Mm that might, should be applicable, can be applicable to other stuff as well. Yep. They don't lose the most important thing by focusing on the edge cases. Babies, bath water. What are the chances mm -hmm. that the final, for example, a new energy tech consumer code prohibits blended payback? I took the effort of pointing out it's against Australian consumer law, but yes, um, I'm hoping it won't be the case, but if it comes out, there is a good chance it will say nothing on the topic. And if it does, in my opinion, it's not worth a bucket of warm spit, cold spit, frozen spit, any temperature spit. And uh, so another commenter linked to a quote that I haven't looked at in detail, but he <laughs> says um, breaks a lot of the rules that Ronald was uh, yep. complaining about. So have a look at that if you want an example. Yes, yes. Um, one of the rules is realistic inflation, electricity price inflation estimates. So. At the moment, the trend is the future markets, which is the best predictor of electricity prices we have, they're not, they're not completely accurate, they're, but they're the best we have. They say it's going to go down on average. It's going to trend down. Electricity prices are heading down. So um, if you believe some installers of batteries and solar systems, oh, we're going to have 8% electricity price inflation. It's going to go up 8% each year or some say 10%, because a few years back, there was a period when it went up that quickly. They ignore what happened before, and they ignore what happened after. Very dishonest. You can make anything look good. Uh, yeah. If you say that the thing it's offsetting is going to increase at 10% mm -hmm. compounded every year for 10 years. Yes, I yes, mean, Jesus. exactly. <laughs> oh dear, yeah, I mean, just to be clear, we get people accusing us of being anti-battery. Look, at batteries, they're a good thing. They're going to be incredibly important. If you mm -hmm. think batteries are good for society, which is a fair call, mm. sell them on the benefits to society. Don't yeah. wrap it up in deceptive financial engineering. Mm -hmm. Plenty of people want batteries and they're not worried about the uh, payback. Maybe they want a payback, but they're happy if they lose a little money as long as they got backup or just the cool new technology. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see what the final form of the... Uh, new energy tech consumer code is. Yes, It'll we maybe all be, yay, or maybe I'll be, oh, oh, this sucks. We'll find out. We'll find out. See you next time. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah. We're not finishing what? yet. Why? Because I haven't told people to be positive, positive things they can do, because we, many of us who are concerned about the environment didn't get the government we wanted. Go for it. So, because um, we have a coalition for more years, I've been thinking what positive steps can people take about take now that the coalition is in control for a few more years. And I'd like to talk about the quality of baked beans you can stock in your shelter. <laughs> just in case, just in case the feedback loops kick in and we have an environmental catastrophe and the world's governments fall to pieces as people starve by the billions. So 
Yep, come on. This is 66 cents from Coles, and it's got the ring pull on it. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. And you want the ring pull because you might need to eat beans while fighting off Wasteland Raiders. Yeah. But then I had a look further and I found these beans. We got oh, four bean mix, 30 cents. Only 30 cents. Ring pull again. All the way from Italy. All the way from Italy. And what I got? Like well, I don't know. I guess I just got lucky. Is it slightly expired? You have to buy like, you know, a small container load to get it for 30 cents but right. each. But what I like is how it says it's BPA free. BPA is a toxin. And any time a um, food manufacturer has to <laughs> boast that they haven't done the most, ba they, they've managed to achieve the most basic task of any food manufacturer to achieve their product isn't toxic. That's a sign of good quality. So um, we've got these beans here and these <laughs> ones. You've been busy, mate. Yep, yeah, I've been very busy. These beans here, the black beans are 30 cents also so we've got the four bean mix living all together in harmony and we've got the black beans here living separately which then made me think well why not for on those special occasions splurge out and get south african fruit salad <laughs> you mm. didn't buy that you just pulled it off the I, shelf i bought it for you and you know this is in your shelter it's going to be like a once a month thing you know you're going to be eating beans three days a week normally. But on, say, say, special occasions, Christmas, or if you've just defeated Lord Humongous's Wasteland Raiders for good, have some South African fruit salad. We'll put that on the DVD extras, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, Jono.